After a very active month in May, we're turning the corner into meteorological summer in June, and yeah, there's more big surprises on the way throughout this month, and I've got you covered here with details on temperature and precipitation trends you can expect on land, but also in the tropics as we head into the start of hurricane season. Stick around for all the details. One Nation Weather. Thanks so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Don't forget, as always, that the model maps that I use throughout my videos are from Weatherbell. You can check out a free trial link to them right down there in the description. Also, of course, if you're new to my channel and have not already, you can hit that subscribe button for more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts delivered right to you in the future. And if you're even not new to my channel, you can always hit that notification bell if you have not already so you never miss a forecast. This video promises a June forecast, and before we dive into, you know, week by week, we want to talk a little bit about what's coming up for the overall month ahead. And this is exactly what the Climate Prediction Center already has prepared for us here in this video, and you can see for June 2024, the monthly temperature outlook looks like this. We've got warmer than average conditions being anticipated. The deeper the red you see on the screen, the deeper the chances and really the intensity of that warmer than average air is likely to be here. So from the southern to the western to even parts of the northern United States, looking above average for most people in terms of the course of the entire month. So even though there will be some cold snaps at times, especially in the east central United States where there's equal chances of warmer and cooler air, warmer air is likely to win out for a lot of people and above average precipitation will win out especially if you're down there in the south central united states heading into the southeastern united states at least according to this graphic you can see especially arkansas louisiana parts of mississippi winning out with precipitation in the month ahead on up there over parts of idaho montana surrounding zones looking a little bit below average with precipitation as we head towards june now before we dive deeper which you can use timestamps to go and skip ahead to where i do dive deeper into what's in the month ahead i do want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the next five to seven days here as we kick off June. And as we go towards our Sunday, June 2nd of 2024, we're looking at a little system bringing I say just scattered showers and thunderstorms here for parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, northern Florida, and parts of the Carolinas northward to the Ohio Valley here. This is not going to bring much in the way of severe weather, if at all, but what will be bringing severe weather is this bigger system that catches your eye likely more here as we head towards the end of our Sunday. Looking like we're going to see some scattered showers, even some numerous showers and thunderstorms develop from parts of Texas all the way to the northern plains and the Dakotas and Minnesota by the end of the day. Some of these will have the potential for gusty winds, some hail, even a few tornadoes is not out of the question here in parts of the plains on our Sunday. We'll take a little bit of a look at where that severe weather could be more focused here in just a minute. But by the time we head towards our Monday, June 3rd, we're looking from parts of Michigan and parts of Wisconsin all the way back down to Texas and Louisiana for the chance of at least some scattered remnant showers and thunderstorms from the system developing through the Monday late day time frame into the evening. This will not be for everyone, but especially if you live there in Kansas, Missouri, surrounding zones, there will be that chance that some of these storms go on the feistier side. By the time we towards Tuesday. That system breaks up while heading towards the eastern United States, but we get something new to fire on up here over parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, all the way firing back on off down there towards parts of Texas, at least according to this particular model. Will this necessarily be 100% correct? No, but if there is a likelihood of severe weather on Tuesday, it's likely from parts of the mid to the upper Mississippi Valley, some surrounding zones in the Central Plains as well getting in on that. Once we head towards the mid to back half of the week, going from Wednesday, June 5th onward, we're likely going to see a lot of our thunderstorm coverage shift to the eastern United States. So from Michigan, Illinois, and Indiana, and down to Arkansas and Texas, east of there, that's where it's looking like a lot of our thunderstorm coverage will be on Wednesday. And a lot of it will be generalized here, except for some spots in the Tennessee and Ohio Valley, more than likely. Same goes on Thursday here as this pushes towards the east coast. Most spots seeing just some generalized thunderstorms, although some spots in the mid-Atlantic and far east coast may be getting in on some severe weather. Now let's take a look at this pattern from the mid-level standpoint with our jet stream. 15 to 20,000 feet above the surface here from America's heads all the way in up there into the atmosphere. We're looking right on up here towards the midweek time frame as we're going to have this little trough or piece of energy mo moving into parts of the upper Midwest. You can see that little bit of that curl on the end of this feature here moving through parts of Wisconsin, Michigan, and even back on over towards Minnesota and surrounding areas as we've got the more strong energy on that jet stream pushing from Washington all the way here to the Dakotas. And really, as this gets going into the North Central United States to start the week, that's why our severe weather chances Sunday are going to be focused over the North Central United States. Then as we head towards our renewed chances that get going, especially Tuesday and into Wednesday here over this region and even heading southeast from there, this jet stream is really supporting all of that. And what it's also going to support as it begins to dive more towards the southeast as we head towards the end of the week is overall some cooler air to sink on down towards the southern and eastern United States. And we'll take a little bit of a closer look at that here momentarily. 
early, but still you can see as we head towards the very end of the week, out ahead of troughs like this, that's where you start to try and get some severe weather anyway. This is not, you know, a very potent positive or negatively tilted trough, just enough flow in the atmosphere here to support some severe weather underneath this kind of environment. So here as we go towards our Sunday, June 2nd of 2024, if I were doing a more normal forecast like I do on my channel where I do kind of a five to seven day outlook here, I would have a little bit more in-depth information on our Sunday, but you can expect if you subscribe to get at least another update on what's going to be happening, but you can see from parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota back down to Texas, a lot of areas at least seeing isolated scattered scattered severe weather being expected at the minimum. Really, if you're in any yellow color or orange on the screen, I see scattered severe weather heading even towards Monday here from parts of Texas all the way towards Illinois. You really need to be on a high alert for at least, again, those isolated severe storms because I think if I have you in a color on my screen, that really means that that is the minimum chance for severe weather you're probably going to have as we head towards that specific day. So here we go towards Tuesday, June 4th of 2024. Most, if not all areas in the yellow and even surrounding spots from parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas north to the upper Midwest and need to be prepared for at least isolated severe storms. That goes towards parts of Indiana, Ohio, back down to northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and northern Georgia towards Wednesday, June 5th of 2024. As this front continues to head eastward, we're going to see other areas get severe weather Wednesday as well. These are just the main zones that you definitely need to be on alert for these days. Heading towards Thursday as well, looking at isolated severe weather, a lot of that's going to be focused towards the east and Gulf Coast regions. And of course, other spots will eventually get included in the potential for those severe storms as we get closer to each event. Now, we're also talking precipitation trends for not only the first week of June, but of course, all the way through June in this forecast. Let's start with the first week, though. Here we go through about the midweek time frame, through the end of our Tuesday, June 4th of 2024. A lot of our precipitation through the midweek time frame from parts of the central and northern plains, all the way and over here towards the Great Lakes. So if you're in any of these blue areas on screen, some of the yellows, the oranges, the reds, that's where you need to be especially on alert for at least a half an inch of rain, as according to the Weather Prediction Center's graphics shows here, or even even some more so you can see some of the spots even back towards the pacific northwest needing to watch out for some flooding out of these heavier days and heavier totals so remember what i showed you earlier in the video with the european model showing you where the rainfall is going to be day by day line that up with this total precipitation and see when the rain is going to be the heaviest and how much it could add up to because of course that could cause some isolated flooding especially where you see those yellows and oranges and reds popping up by the end of the week now with an outlook that is pretty much very accurate a lot of the time a six to ten day temperature outlook from climate prediction center here we go towards specifically June 7th through 11th of 2024 if you live from parts of the central United States heading into parts of the Midwest the Great Lakes and even some spots in the east looking below average for temperatures indicated by those blues and the reds that's looking above average so if especially you're along the west coast and the Gulf Coast of the United States looking above average for temperatures as we head towards the mid-month time frame with the precipitation you can see some of those tan shades from the north central to the southeastern United States indicating below average precip being expected behind a front but if you live up there in the northeast and back towards the southwestern United States, those areas a little bit above average in terms of our precipitation as we head towards that time frame, at least being anticipated by the Climate Prediction Center. Let's back some of this up here with the ensemble systems. This is a collection of models backing us up to show us exactly where some of these trends are going to be located. And again, you can see a lot of the western United States already beginning to warm on up by the time we head towards Wednesday, June 5th of 2024. So from parts of California, heading into Nevada surrounding areas, notice some of those grays indicating that a collection of models averaged on out is already showing some 20 to 30 degree above average temperature departures. And we head towards, a, you know, June 5th and onward here, we're already beginning to see that filter on in. At the same time, by the time we head towards the upcoming weekend, what we're also seeing is some of this cooler air filter on in. So from parts of the Dakotas, the Great Lakes region, all the way to the southeastern United States, temperatures can be expected to be around 5 to 10 degrees below average, according to these averages on screen right here, heading towards that time frame. Now, even as we head a little bit deeper into June, now moving on towards the 10th, the 11th. Look at this, the cooler are expanding a little bit more. So even parts of New Mexico, you know, Colorado, Wyoming, even a little bit, we'll see some of the cooler air sink that far south as we're going to have this front and really that polar jet stream energy that I was showing you earlier sink far enough south for this cool air to filter on in. Even towards, say, Friday, June 14th of 2024, we're still going to be looking at likely some cooler than average air over a lot of the southeastern quadrant of the United States. Meanwhile, though, we will start to see some warmer air begin to bubble on up, especially over the western United States, continuing to filter even more towards the central parts of the United States towards mid-month. And that is a little bit more important with what we're going to see as we head towards the back half of June. And I'll show you that in just a second. In terms of precipitation, though, 
this is in seven day anomalies. So if what you see on screen with the date on the top left, that encompasses the previous seven days. So from June 2nd to June 9th, above average over a lot of the east, that's what I was just showing you a minute ago here as we start off the month pretty active. But as we go with time here, we're going to see a lot of areas actually go drier than average. So from Montana all the way to the Great Lakes, this ensemble system, so a collection of models is showing this. A lot of other indications are showing this as well. By the time we had June 5th through 12th, a lot of spots in the north, central, and even the central United States below average in terms of precipitation. That does come with a little bit of an exception here, though. Down in the south central United States in a corridor from Texas and Oklahoma towards parts of the Carolinas, I think as we head through the 9th to the 16th here, we will see some spots in those zones staying a little bit above average with our precipitation as, again, that polar jet energy takes a little while to filter on southward and the combination of the cooler air moving from the Great Lakes southward with that warmer air on the Gulf Coast will kind of form some storms along that. Here we go towards June 15th through 28th, a lot warmer than average for pretty much everyone here. So this is the three to four week temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. Is this going to be exactly correct? Are those ensembles going to be exactly correct? No, but this gives you the general idea that as we towards the back half of the month here and pretty much those final two weeks a lot warmer than average for most of the country excluding some spots on up there towards the north central and great lakes region here we go in that same time frame and window for precipitation looking above average for a lot of the east a little bit below average there in the central parts of the rockies there so we'll have to see if that ends up playing on out but what we're likely to see play out this hurricane season as we shift gears to that is a very chaotic season a potentially record-setting season and in fact this is a record-setting outlook here from the climate prediction center and specifically NOAA, the national oceanic and atmospheric administration here for our 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. This goes from June to November here, so we're expecting to see above normal conditions. In fact, the National Weather Service, you know, all the agencies that made this forecast here indicating there is that 85% chance that the season is above normal, and otherwise it's pretty much guaranteed that it would be near normal at the minimum. So you need to prepare for a very active time ahead as we're looking at 17 to 25 named storms being expected, 8 to 13 hurricanes, and around 4 to 7 major hurricanes. Keep in mind that the forecast for 2023 was one to four major hurricanes before the season began. Four is the minimum amount being expected by this agency, which is normally pretty conservative here as we head towards the season ahead. So this, that isn't an alarming sign. What also is very alarming is this right here, and this is La Nina. You see those blue lines continuing to creep up with time as we head through the rest of this year. La Nina pattern is typically associated with warmer and more active Atlantic waters, and especially what it really does is weaken that wind shear there in parts of the Caribbean surrounding areas there in the Atlantic Ocean. And of course, that wind shear is what normally kind of tears apart clouds, tears apart hurricanes as a result there in the ocean. And we're not likely going to have that much as we head into the summer ahead and really even towards the fall with our worst part of our hurricane season, which normally caused, say, August, September. Look at that. You can see La Nina. There's pretty much an 80% chance that La Nina wins out by the time we head towards August, September, October. It could really be dominating even earlier than that as we're seeing the shift through a neutral phase from El Nino to La Nina right now. And remember, 2020 was a very similar season to what we're going to see this year. So there is a very high chance that this could be a record-breaking season that even outlasts the high number of name storms that we saw then. Now, if there is development in June, it is typically close to home. So in the Gulf of Mexico, right off the east coast of the United States as well. That is where we normally see the tracks. So they normally originate in the Gulf of Mexico, right over places like Florida, Georgia, surrounding areas, and then kind of go off that Carolina coast region there. And that's exactly what you can see on the blue. Now, that is not a common thing to see that happen in June, and normally it's only like one or two storms if it does happen at all. But still keep in mind that a tropical storm or weak hurricane could be possible mainly in those areas as we head towards June. One last thing here as this graphic will get you prepared for the entire hurricane season ahead. And there's more information in the bottom left of your screen right now. And of course, I'll link that right down there in the description of this video and possibly in a pinned comment as well so that you know that website there. And of course, feel free to drop any other questions you have about this graphic down below in the comments section after this video. But just to overview things and what I'm talking about here and what this graphic is talking about with each individual little point on the infographic, you need to know whether you're in a storm surge or just overall hurricane prone area with water and wind as we head towards this upcoming hurricane season. You need to prepare an emergency kit and the basic necessities that need to go in it include food, water, batteries, chargers, a radio, and cash ahead of this hurricane season if you're especially in one of those areas you know has a very high risk of getting hit even on a regular year. You need to understand how to use forecast information no matter where you are on the east or gulf coast of the united states in fact even if you're in the islands in the atlantic it doesn't matter where you are you need to know how to use the national hurricane center's cone get your information from weather.gov if you're in america of course, you need to know how to get moving when a storm threatens. You, know, you need to understand how to cover those windows, secure the doors and furniture outside of your home as well. 
grab those supplies and get gas quickly when the storm is getting ready to strike. And plus, you need to know how to stay protected during storms and use caution after storms. So if you want to read up more on that, again, the link will be down below this video. There will be that link right there that you see on screen in the description and in a pinned comment. So make sure you look out for that down below the video. You can always learn more about what to expect from hurricanes at weather.gov slash hurricane as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope it wasn't a little bit too much of a just monotone rumble. But anyway, that's it for this one. Hit the subscribe button for more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts in the future. That's it for this one. one nation weather.